name's Lee, thanks for joining me. Today I just wanted to take a little bit of time to make a sharpening station for my hand planes. So this is the sort of thing we're talking about, this is a, a record four and a half. Um, and for a little while now I've been trying to find a sensible solution to quickly hone these blades. Because obviously, like any edge tool, they're no good to you unless they're razor sharp. So I started off on this process with the idea to use float glass as a backer, as a dead flat surface, and some kind of abrasive that then sticks to that float glass. So advertised at a couple of a couple of places, I found this system uh, called like a scary sharpening kit, which supplies you with there's three different sizes here, or sorry, three different pieces of float glass here, they're all the same size, and they are what are they? They're kind of just over 80 mil by just under 300, so a little over three inches by just under a foot. Now, they come as a separate entity, and then you can buy this self adhesive um, paper by 3M, which is an aluminium oxide abrasive with a self adhesive backing. So, an ideal combination, you would think, nice, smooth, registered flat surface and a self-adhesive paper that they can then stick onto it. Fine, great. Now, what I also invested in at the time was one of these Richard Kell uh, honing guides. And this one is a number two. It's the large wheel version, which I think is the only one that you can get at the moment in, not as a number two. It does various versions, but this one seemed to do everything I wanted it to do. So, basically the idea of this is you take the blade out of your plane so let's just do that and we're going to remove the chip breaker so we're just going to rotate this and take the actual the, the plane iron or the blade out for sharpening leave all the other components there now these blades are this is the widest one I've got it's 60 millimeters which is two and three eighths of an inch thereabouts. And this honing guide accommodates that quite nicely. Not a problem at all. You put it in between the rollers, you register it on this surface, and then you set the projection of the blade beyond these stainless steel roller bars to 30 millimeters, we're gonna say, and that's gonna give us an angle of about 27 degrees, but we'll go into that a little bit in a minute. Point being is, I thought this is going to be a great solution because it gives you a registered angle. I've put a different grit of abrasive on each side of these stones. So I've actually got six stages of sharpening here. So I can go from a pretty coarse right through to an ultra fine, just flipping them over as I go. Now, first problem I encountered trying to use this system is with the blade in the, in the honing guide, the overall width of these wheels comes up to just under, well say 95 millimetres, so just under four inches. Now with these being just over three inches, what happens is when you set these down on one of these plates, the, the wheels are only halfway in contact, and you want a little bit of margin for error, if you obviously slip off the side, you, you're not maintaining any kind of angle, and you're certainly not maintaining the, the edge straight on the stone. So effectively, this is a bit awkward to use, and I found it was, I was concentrating so hard on just trying to keep it on the stone, it was a problem. So that's, that's the first problem I encountered. My mistake for buying individuals thinking that was a, you know, a good idea at the time. But the second problem I've encountered is with this self-adhesive backing. Now, I used to work in the print trade and I used to laminate a lot of stuff. And one of the biggest problems you've got is when you release and a self-adhesive a self from its backing paper, you, you naturally create static and then any dust in the air is drawn to that sticky surface and obviously once it's stuck, it's stuck. If you've ever tried to put one of those protective films on your mobile phone screen, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Um, now, as clean and dust free as I try and keep my workshop, obviously it's a woodworking shop, you, you, you know, you can hoover, you can dust, you can keep it as clean as possible. There's always going to be a little bit of ambient dust. So the problem is, you go to peel off your backing paper and then when you stick it on, I don't know if you can pick up here, we've got these little dark spots. Now what that is, is that's bits of dust that have been attracted by the static to this sticky surface. It's then been applied to the float glass and of course the minute you rub a blade against it, 
the reason these are really dark is it's picking up as high spots so the blade's contacting those before any other area on that piece of glass so that's another problem and when you want you know a dead straight true keen edge it's not really any use so that is a bit of an issue now these will still be useful for sharpening other other tools but for this particular purpose I've found it quite inconvenient so I'm going to kind of move away from this idea a little bit and go back to kind of an old favourite of mine which is the wet and dry paper which I normally use for sharpening my knives which you might have seen in other videos so these are my usual wet and dry sharpening paddles they're made from um, HDF it's actually laminate flooring which was smooth on both sides and again I've doubled up on the grit so I've got 240 on one side 500 on the other a thousand two and a half thousand five thousand then on the back of the other one is leather for my stropping compound so that is great for knives and stuff and for using when I can clamp the blade in a vise or something and actually move the move these around onto the blade it's not so good for plain blades because they're not wide enough I could make up a similar system but what I thought is stick stick with a float glass theme so I've got myself a bigger piece of float glass this is that so this is a much bigger piece and I've already made a start on this by sticking the 240 grit and the 500 grit onto one side and then we're going to work on this front side in a moment and apply the rest of the grits to try and keep the video of a reasonable length I've actually pre-cut these pieces so on the back I was, I was able, able to put a slightly use the full length of the sheet at 280 mil but I've cut these to incorporate the full width of the blade plus the guide plus a little bit of little bit of movement so I've cut these at 110 mil which gives me you know a good bit of play either side of this honing guide and what I've got here is the thousand the two and a half thousand the five thousand grit and then I've also got a, a really thin piece of leather this is actually like a, a split a suede and I think this one's pigskin it's very very thin probably less than half a millimeter in thickness and what I'm going to do is first of all clean this surface because I want to make sure it's nice and grease and dust free so this is what I usually use for degreasing the tangs of blades and stuff it's actually brake and clutch cleaner and I'm just going to use a little bit of this on some kitchen paper and just clean this surface up to make sure that there's no contamination there and that we're sticking to a nice clean surface now I mentioned about the print trade teaching me a little bit about these laminated surfaces and the problem that you're going to get with static and stuff like that now the trade that I got into after that was actually the flooring trade and in that I used to use this heavy duty spray adhesive for sticking carpet and stuff down so that's what I'm going to use to actually attach these to here so and the best thing I've found to keep everything else in the workshop clean and free of this really sticky adhesive is to use a bit of old newspaper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the thousand grit and the two and a half thousand grit remove a few of these other bits out of the way give myself a bit of space to work and I'm going to lay these upside down on the newspaper and I'm just going to take I'm covering up the thing that I've just cleaned I'm just going to give this a little bit of a shake and just a very very light coat don't want to build up any thickness here I just want it enough to stick down a very light coat move that off to one side and then just carefully pick this up and apply it to the edge here in register with right up with the edge because I know that I've just got enough width here and then I'm just going to use a little roller to make sure that's nice and flat and the two and a half thousand you don't get too long before this this adhesive dries out so you want to work fairly quickly butt this up to the thousand grit get that nice and straight and again just use the roller to firm it into position And what we've now hopefully got is a nice flat surface. Now this, this particular type of abrasive doesn't last very long, which is why I want to use a quick way of mounting it. I'm just going to fold that paper over so I've not got the sticky bit anymore. And I'm going to go for the 5000 grit on its own now. Again, just a light coat. So we don't get any lumps and bumps in the adhesive itself. Pick that up. And I've just got room 
to butt that up and add it in there. Yeah, rub it down. So I'm just going to mark these up now. So I've got a thousand, two and a half thousand, and five thousand. Now that's going to take you pretty much to a, a mirror polish, but not quite. So this last thing I'm going to put on is this split suede and actually that bit of newspaper is not big enough. Let's get another piece and I'm going to stick this across the base here. So I've basically got on this side are my finer grips. So what I'm hoping is that a lot of the time this is all I'm going to need. And I'm not going to need the back of the back of the board. Just a light dusting. Stick this down carefully. I'm just going to sort of centralise this in the space. And again, on with that roller, just to get that well pressed down. This is a sort of just like a, a wallpaper seam roller or penny roller, I think they call them. It's always handy to have in the workshop. Now I'm going to get rid of that sticky newspaper and we're done with the spray adhesive. Now, when it comes to changing this, which you're going to need to do fairly regularly, you want to be able to release it fairly quickly. With my paddles that I use, I've found two fairly quick ways of doing that. First one is with a heat gun. This is quite an old one from the 1960s. They don't make them, they don't look like hair dryers anymore. But this one is one that my granddad used to use for shrinking the film onto aeroplane wings when he used to build model aeroplanes. Now, it's still going strong. I use it in the workshop on a very regular basis. Um, but it does get really hot, which I think is why they don't make them looking like hair dryers anymore. But I find if I heat this up over the area, it softens the adhesive and I can peel it off. And usually the residue comes off with the paper, which is quite useful. If there's any issues with that, I generally use this just white, just standard white spirit to clean off any residue. Or you, what you can do is just soak a rag with the white spirit and soak the top of the paper. Wait for that to soak through and loosen the adhesive and then it'll peel off dead easy. And then you can go back to degreasing it with the, the brake and clutch cleaner or an alcohol of some description. So there we are kind of set up now. We've got 1,000, 2,500, 5,000 and on the back in case we need them is 240 and 500. So I've just got this on a little bit of the um, anti-slip mat in here and this should hopefully now be all I need to hone this plane blade. Now bearing in mind I've just roughly set this projection so I'm just going to check it. These are the instructions here, really quite nice handwritten instructions that came with the guide and if you read it all through it, you can, it gives you the projections for anything from 17 and a half degrees right through to 45 degrees and how much blade should project beyond these rollers here. So it says basically you read through all of this you can have your own setup methods. Richard describes on his uh, YouTube as basically setting this up at 25 degrees I believe and then introducing some packers so that you leave the blade in at the same projection and then basically step it up to 30 degrees for your finishing strokes. Now in these instructions he recommends actually just to get going and you know to kind of average those out go for 27 degrees and he's talking about an inch and a quarter of projection to achieve that which is about 30 millimeters so I'm just going to double check this and I've got about 30 and a half so I'm just going to back this off very slightly using the rule as the guide just nip that up and then he also shows on his thing just to give it a tiny little nip with a spanner just to make sure but literally a very tiny amount you don't want to start squeezing and deforming anything it's just to make sure it doesn't come loose so this this blade isn't you know completely blunt so it shouldn't be too much of a problem but I'm just going to give it a go on this thousand and so basically you can go on this surface hopefully being with this paper on a flat surface like this I should get away with pushing forward but obviously it is only paper so if I dig in a little bit too much it's going to be a problem so I'm just going to draw it away. Now that's making life a lot easier, I don't have to concentrate on how accurately I'm holding it, obviously you can rock back and go like that. Now what you're looking for there is a little bit of a burr and I can feel there's a burr form there already. So I can basically move up through the grits, I've got a two and a half thousand now just to refine this a few strokes and you can see on the paper there there's a little bit of material build up you can see just a, a slight discoloration where that's removing some material so up to the 5,000 and as long as you've established a burr all the way along the edge then you've you know you've cut enough material to make this sharp now I'm just going to go straight onto this leather I haven't loaded this with compound I will at some point 
but I haven't got any to hand immediately so I'm just going to give this a go on the leather like this and then what we should all we should need to do is take this out having worked on the bevel side all the way along all I should have to do on this side is just wipe off that burr on the leather with a bit of luck so I'm just using the palm to put pressure down and just draw this across nice and flat and we should oh yeah it looks good we should have achieved a nice edge on there so that can now be installed back in the plane setting the chip breaker fairly carefully which I'm no I'm only just kind of starting to learn a little bit more about plane blades and the way the, the way these the way these tools operate so I can't really give you any huge amounts of advice but this so the purpose of this video was just to talk about the pros and cons of the various abrasives now I think this this will work for me I'm pretty confident so I'm just lining this chip breaker up now you can use the cap iron there just to nip it up or well, probably a screwdriver is a better option but then this will drop back into the plane and then you've got to go through the the setup procedure to make sure that you've got the iron set correctly there's no point thinking that your adjustments from previous are going to work because you've just sharpened the blade but you know that will take a little bit of setting up now to make it work but there we go basically I think that's hopefully going to be a good solution for me I can actually just wrap it up in this piece of anti-slip matting store it under the bench so it stays clean and dust free what I would do is if I was going to use these harsher abrasives on the back what I would do is just probably put some kitchen towel or something on here so I'm not transferring the various abrasives from one side to the other because obviously if I get a 240 grit abrasive on the 1000 grit it's not 1000 grit anymore so you've got to be a little bit careful about cross contamination um, but I think you know, being sensible you could probably you probably should actually wipe the blade between the grits just so you make sure you're removing any residue there this was just like I say a quick video to show you the basics of how I intend to use this it's probably going to take some fine tuning and if I encounter any problems I will kind of come back to you and talk to it talk to you about that as and when I've had a chance to use this properly all right so I've just taken a couple of minutes just to go to the trouble of setting this plane up properly now so I know the blades set in the mouth nice and square it's adjusted to a sensible you know a sensible depth that is cutting nice thin shavings this is just a piece of pine I've just just prepared the surface a little bit taking a few shavings so I just want to show you the kind of edge that we've achieved using this system so I'll take a couple of shavings hopefully you can hear just how nice that is and just to give you an idea, we've got some really nice translucent paper thin shavings there. Full width of the piece of timber. So there we go, that's what I was hoping to achieve basically. And then you can see it didn't take long to actually put that edge on the plane. Alright, it wasn't so it wasn't beyond serviceable as it was, it was still cutting but there were some very fine little nicks and scratches in the edge that were causing, that were showing up in the timber. Now I don't know how well the camera will pick this up but you can see hopefully if I move that around a bit just how clean and smooth that surface is and that really is you know smoother than you'd ever get it sanding it so you know abrasives so for me like the wet and dry paper are perfect for this job they're cheap the float glass is perhaps a little bit more expensive but it's certainly cheaper than a whole set of Japanese water stains which are then going to have to constantly be reflatting if you want to sharpen plane blades on them you know you're going to have to keep the stones really flat and that in itself is a bit of a chore so this is a fairly quick simple cheap solution to achieve this edge that we're all looking for so hopefully that's been of some help to you so thanks very much for watching I'll see you again soon